made it to Friday. Awesome! Welcome to CNN 10. My name is Carl Azus. Happy to be wrapping up the week and month with you. Today's show starts with science and what might be the discovery of a new planet. Since 1999, NASA has had a telescope in orbit called the Chandra spacecraft. They put it tens of thousands of miles above our heads because it's an X-ray telescope. This technology enables it to observe really hot parts of the universe like exploded stars. But because Earth's atmosphere naturally absorbs X-rays, scientists needed to place the $3 billion telescope into space. The Chandra Telescope recently helped them detect something in another galaxy. Signs of a planet transiting a star. This doesn't mean scientists actually saw the planet or that the telescope actually photographed it. It means that something caused the light from the star to dim a little bit and that something could be a planet passing between the star and the telescope. Astronomers have seen this before. They've detected thousands of exoplanets orbiting stars outside of our own sun. But this one would be in a galaxy far, far away, known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. It would take 28 million years for light to travel from here to there. And if what they've noticed is indeed a planet, it would be the first one ever detected outside of our own Milky Way galaxy. You keep hearing me say words like detected, might, and could. That's because scientists don't know for sure if they've identified an extragalactic exoplanet. They believe that if they have, it won't transit or cross in front of its star again for another 70 years. That means it could take decades before they're able to confirm their theory if they happen to be looking for this at just the right time. So a lot of uncertainty about the discovery, but researchers plan to keep tabs on it and keep looking for signs of other planets in other galaxies. 10 Second Trivia which of these mountains is also known as Mangibello, Vesuvius, Denali, Kilimanjaro, or Etna? Mangibello is the Sicilian name for Mount Etna, which is located on the island of Sicily. One of the many side effects of the COVID pandemic is that it dramatically raised the demand for plastic. Masks, gloves, food containers, packaging for goods shipped around the world. Calls for all this stuff skyrocketed. And while plastic can be recycled, it became much cheaper last year to buy new plastic than the recycled kind. More than 80% cheaper according to an analysis cited by the Reuters news agency. Plastic is inexpensive, it's durable, and tons of it winds up in landfills where it sits without decomposing for a very long time. There are alternatives being developed, like you're about to see, but they don't always work as intended. The original plan for an alternative packaging called Uhu was to replace water bottles. But as technology news site BGR reports, the small liquid pods didn't hold nearly as much fluid as bottles, they're not as durable as containers you could throw into a gym bag, and they don't last as long on a store shelf, for instance, to compete with plastics that can sit for months. But the company that makes Uhu is finding other ways to move forward with its mission. The problem with plastic is that it's indestructible. It's a material that will stay around for hundreds of years. So it's really, really performant, but we use it for the wrong reasons. We use it in places where we throw away something after just five minutes of use. And that's really this problem we're trying to solve. According to the UN, every year, 300 million tonnes of plastic waste is generated. Half of that plastic is designed to be used only once. That's why Pierre Paslier set out to find a material that eliminates our reliance on plastic for single-use packaging, taking his inspiration from nature. We chose seaweed because it has a lot of sustainable credentials. First of all, 
it grows very fast. Some of the seaweed that we've tried in the lab grows up to one meter per day. Second of all, it doesn't use fresh water or fertilizer to grow. It just grows on its own in the sea without human intervention. And on top of that, when it grows, it sequesters carbon. So it really is something that has a lot more potential in helping us getting out of this problem than a lot of other biomass. Nopla has used this innovative material to produce its flagship product, Uhu. The packaging, made out of seaweed, can hold drinks and sauces and is able to biodegrade in a matter of weeks. It's really in line with uh, fruits and vegetables, so not plat packaging can break down in a home compost extremely fast, just like an apple or just like an orange. The entire bubble can even be swallowed whole. Manufacture begins in Nopla's East London warehouse, where chemists mix different seaweed and plant extracts to create a solution. This solution is used to create a thin membrane, which has properties suitable for packaging ready to be filled with anything from ketchup to cocktails. The concept works for any liquid. We partnered for the London Marathon with Lucozade. They were using uh, plastic bottles and cups and they were really keen to reduce the amount of waste that is created at these events. And actually at the end of the event, it was brilliant that the trucks that clean the streets and usually have to stop at each station to pick up all of that plastic, they just drove by our station. There was nothing to pick up. So it was really incredible the feeling that we had delivered hydration without the plastic. <laughs> And beyond liquids, Nopla is looking to revolutionise the takeout food industry, with British delivery company JustEatTakeaway.com seeking to replace the plastic that typically lines food delivery boxes with seaweed. What we wanted to find was not just a card box, because that would leak. And so what the guys at Nopla have done so cleverly is add a lining to that card that gives the heatproof, waterproof, greaseproof properties of plastic but disappears in the ground in a couple of weeks. Nature has all of the solutions. We just have to continue getting our inspiration from it. Different plants, different trees, different vegetables. This is what the future looks like. We need to use more of other natural materials. And I think through this diversity, we can really solve this problem. And I'm really hopeful that we will. Rolling pumpkins, smashing pumpkins, sledding on pumpkins. 10 out of... This is how some students at an Ohio high school celebrate the Halloween season. It's a tradition dating back to the 1960s. They have a whole mess of pumpkins dumped on a steep hill. They smash some of said pumpkins on said steep hill. And then they slide down the slimy pumpkin innards on sleds, boxes, plastic pools, whatever they can find, really. Money is raised in advance to pay for the cleanup and any police tickets that might be issued. It's impossible for pumpkin rolls to stem from what's discreet. When you're having a gourd time and sliming up and down the street, you could eat some seeds or bake some bread, but where's the fun in that when you can bust some pumpkin heads and sled as part of a master plant? It's vine time, a slick stick of fruit they'll never want to drop, and you pump can easily see the glee they glean from the cream of the crop. All right, pumpkin puns, they'll grow on you. I'm Carl Azus. Before we leave today, we want to make a stop in Four Oaks, North Carolina to shout out the students of South Johnson High School. We hope you and everyone else watching has a wonderful weekend. <laughs>